Um, yeah, so the next talk is about uh, Rust for Linux. Uh, we are going to give a very quick uh, status update uh, with the most important things uh, that are happening right now. And some of the things we did last year, and then Wesson will uh, take over and speak about the uh, kernel features, uh, things that he's working on, uh, things that we are working on uh, in the team, and some of the features. So Rust Linux, for those of you that don't know, and I hope if you are here, you know, so it will be very quick. Uh, Rust Linux is trying to get uh, Rust, uh, the programming language support into the Linux kernel as a first class uh, language. So we want to use it for everything that you would use uh, C4 eventually. Um, the idea is, uh, or the, the, the minimum thing that we want to do uh, is supporting writing kernel modules in Rust, any kind of kernel module in principle. Uh, but we are starting with driver file systems, etc., and using, of course, uh, as little unsafe code, unsafe code as possible, because that's the main reason. It's not the only reason, but it's the main reason we are we want Rust uh, in the kernel. So last year, very quickly, I will not go through all the points, but uh, we did some during the last year. We did some uh, uh, major things, let's say, like removing the panic in allocations. Uh, we moved to the latest edition of the Rust language. Uh, we started to use stable releases of the Rust compiler, etc. Uh, we have more, a few more architecture reports, uh, the initial support, testing support, uh, support for post procs in the build system, uh, etc., etc. Then on the abstraction side, uh, there are a lot of things that are happening. Uh, there is a lot of uh, people working on new abstractions and new support for new uh, subsystems. Uh, it's amazing all the things that uh, people is working on. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, some people is even working on uh, GPU uh, drivers, as you probably know, uh, in the Asahi project, Asahi Linux. Then uh, I want to speak about a bit of the related projects so that you have a bit of context on what has been happening in not just Rust for Linux, but all the other projects that we need uh, to support uh, this project. Uh, for example, Rust, uh, the language or the teams, stabilized, stabilized, sorry. Uh, a few unstable uh, features that we used, and they keep uh, working on them. Uh, we got some improvements there in the standard library as well, in the tooling. Uh, we got in VinUtils, uh, to, not just for us, of course, but uh, the V0 demangling that we were using is already supporting VinUtils, DB, etc. Uh, the Intel uh, Zero Day uh, CI, uh, the kernel test robot, started to, to provide uh, Rust support, so they are running the, their CI uh, with Rust support uh, enabled. Uh, that we will have a talk uh, later about this. Uh, Linaro uh, took suite, added also Rust support, uh, and then we just saw two very nice talks about uh, <coughs> Rust Cone, GCC, GCC, and GCC Rust, uh, which saw a, a lot of progress. And even in Cangrejos, we got uh, a demo from Anthony, uh, which uh, was really nice to see the kernel booting uh, with a full uh, or almost full GCC uh, build with no LLVM except for the binding uh, libclone. And then, uh, as Anthony mentioned, uh, Compiler Explorer has added uh, all these uh, new alternative compilers, uh, and you can just try them in, in, in Compiler Explorer. For more details about this, you can see a blog post uh, here in the ISRG Proximo page uh, if you want to read more. Uh, also, in the open source uh, North America, we did uh, recently uh, this summer uh, in LinuxCon uh, a session, so you can hear more details about all these things. Uh, in Cangrejos, very recently, last week, a few days ago, we were uh, there. It's a conference, uh, a workshop that we organized for Rust for Linux. This time, it has been only, uh, well, only 25 people, but it was really great. Uh, I I wouldn't have thought that we would have reached a quorum in the beginning, and then I, I saw the response from everybody, and it was uh, really, really nice to have you all there and, and come to the to, to, to Cangrejos, because I, I know it was not easy, so thanks a lot, uh, everyone that came. We will have some in the web page. We will have some uh, photos soon uploaded. Uh, I will send a message to the mailing list, mailing list so that you can see everybody that attended, etc., etc. Uh, the talks, the slides, etc. So I, I, I hope you, you enjoy it, and I hope that maybe you can come and see it. Uh, LWN is going to report. Uh, it's already has already an article up there. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to mention Google and ISRG for making it possible because they sponsor the the, 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 the workshop. Um, by the way, I didn't take out my, my <laughs> sorry. Um, it's a bit more clear now. And now the big thing in my part of the presentation, uh, V9 is the last uh, version that we submitted to, to the mailing list. 
uh, and it's about trimming down. It's very different than V8. So until V8, uh, we were submitting basically most of the things that we had uh, that we consider uh, uh, good enough to, to, to present to the kernel. Uh, but now we were requested to, to trim down that and to submit uh, a smaller version, a trimmed down version. That is V9. It has enough support to just compile a minimal Rust kernel module. It includes uh, a sample that is able to use a vector of integers and printing some numbers with the PR info macro, so very minimal. Uh, it represents 3% of the original crate that we had before, the kernel crate, basically the abstractions. It's now 500 uh, lines only, so it's very, very uh, a very small part of what we had submitted until now. Then we have uh, also a smaller alloc crate where the delta that we were speaking before is just 100 lines uh, between the vanilla alloc and, and what we have. Uh, we went down from, in total, con con including alloc, we went down from 40 to 13 uh, kilo lines of code, which is much more uh, manageable, and it could be made even more minimal if needed. Uh, the goal is to, with this trimming, is to get the core RAS support in uh, now, get, get it ready for the merge, and then start upstreaming uh, piece by piece, by piece uh, everything else. Uh, you can still uh, continue to, to browse the, the, the project in, in the full repository, let's say, in the, in the same place as so far. And now, with uh, Wesson will take over and we'll explain some, some updates on the, on, the, on the abstractions. Thanks, thanks, Miguel. Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk about now is uh, some of the things that uh, we added between V7 and V8. Uh, so V8 is, is, as Miguel explained, uh, a version with everything that we, we wanted to, to push upstream. Uh, and V9 is a stream down, uh, trim down version of that. Um, so uh, one thing that we added in V8 was uh, limited uh, file system support. So we added a bunch of abstractions for um, uh, things like super blocks, inodes, dentries, uh, file names, uh, contexts for, for file systems. Um, and, and some macros and, and, and helper stuff. Uh, however, uh, at the moment with, with that support, uh, we, we can't really uh, create anything other than an empty file system. Uh, so you can list file systems, you can register them and you can mount them, but they're, they're gonna be empty. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about that uh, when we get to uh, things that are coming up next. Um, so in, in addition to, to file systems, we added support for, for work queues. Uh, here's an example of how you uh, start a, a, a work item. Um, you use this macro spawn work item uh, and you specify which, which queue you want. Um, and you, you can use one of the system existing ones or you can allocate your own. Um, that uh, thing that starts with two pipes there is basically the contents of, of the work, it's, it's, it's a closure. Um, and then there's this question mark in the end, which is an indication that this, this may fail because there's an allocation involved. Um, so this is just like for, for simplicity, if you have some work item that you want to, to run, you can use this. Um, now, if you want to do things more like the, in the C style, uh, what you can do is you, you, you have a struct and just like in C, you embed in it this uh, work, um, a field with this work type. Uh, you specify what, what it is that you want to do when that thing uh, gets, gets to run. Um, and you can use this um, uh, call at the bottom there. Uh, again, at the, uh, in the front, you specify which, which queue you want to, to enqueue to, uh, you call it and you specify what, which work item you want to run. Uh, and if you see, if you notice, if you note, there's no question mark there, which means that um, it, it cannot fail. Um, so this is very, very similar to, to, to the way uh, C does things. Uh, there's one step that I don't specify here, which is you have to initialize work within example, which is similar to what, how we do for other things like mutexes. Um, now, the reason really um, we added the support for, for work queues was because we wanted to add a work queue based uh, async executor. So async Rust executor. Uh, and the idea is that you can write uh, Rust async code and, and uh, you, get, you get it to run in, in uh, work queue. Uh, so here we're leveraging all the existing infrastructure in, on the C sides of, of, of the kernel. Um, and, and so here's, here's an example. You do this uh, uh, try new to, to create a, a new executor and you specify which uh, work queue you want it to run on. And then you can do this uh, spawn task calls. Um, and if you look um, like this block here that is prefixed with async, that's the async task we want to run. There'll be uh, another example uh, in a couple of slides. Um, and one thing that we have here, uh, there's, there's no code here, but the idea is that once this handle goes out of scope, uh, we automatically stop that uh, executor. 
which means that uh, uh, in, in this case, the drop implementation actually waits for uh, any in-flight tasks to complete and then shuts them down. Uh, this actually helps with, with, with cleanup too. It makes it much easier to, to clean things up. I'll talk a little bit about this uh, later. Uh, here's here's um, uh, a more involved example, but not very complicated example of, of using async. Um, this, this point where we have these uh, await blocks, uh, they just basically turn into states in a state machine. So you write code as if you were uh, burning a thread, but, but really this gets to run in, in the work queue. Uh, and these await points that I've, I've flagged here are points in which we give up the thread. Uh, and then eventually when we can make, pro make progress, uh, it returns from that point. Uh, and we don't have to manually uh, manage the state. It's all done by the compiler for us. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out in this, in this slide is that um, uh, in the accept loop, one thing that we do is we accept new connections and we, we, we spawn new tasks uh, for, uh, to, to handle these new connections. Uh, but if you look here, we have this ref impo executor. All it means here really is that we don't uh, care what the implementation, what implementation we use for the executor. As long as some executor, we, we handle it. Um, and yeah, this is actually, it, it's, it's committed as an example. So you can go to, to samples Rust and you, you'll find the, the full echo server there. And it's, it's just a few more lines than this. Um, what else? Uh, there's the beginning of the introduction of RCU. We just have the, the, the read side uh, uh, for now. Um, it's just this RCU colon colon read lock. And then you hold in the lock uh, until this, this guard uh, goes out of scope or you drop it explicitly. Um, and uh, the reason we introduced this is because we have this idea of, of um, uh, revocable objects. And uh, one of the instances of these revocable objects is that uh, objects um, cannot be revoked while they are in, in, in a read lock. Um, and, and then they get revoked after the, the, the after the after, after the RCU guarantees that nobody else is, is using this. Uh, so what we do here is we uh, acquire the lock and then we use the guard as evidence uh, that the lock is acquired. Uh, and there's no other way for you to have access to revocable things other, other than something like this. Um, what else? Um, there's, there was a, a, a simple way to create threads as well. It's, it's very similar to, to creating work threads, uh, sorry, work items. Uh, but uh, the extra thing you have to specify is the name of the of, of the task and and the contents. And this, of course, can be just a, a function if you want. It will be similar to to C. Uh, but in Rust, we can use clo closures to 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 create threads. Uh, and of course, this closure is just uh, one one statement. But we can do curly braces here and, and have like a more complicated thing. Uh, and of course, this may fail. We we are allocating stacks and states, so uh, we need this this question mark in the end. Uh, we also have a bunch of other uh, miscellaneous stuff in the in the in in, in V8 uh, IRQ handling. We've actually had this for for over a year, but it, it's it, it was um, together with the other NVMe uh, changes would, would, was never merged, so I separated it and merged it, um, and, and a few other things there that um, we added in in V8. Um, I'm going to switch gears into a little bit about things that are not were not in V8 but uh, on the pipeline and will be uh, ready soon. Um, for file objects, if you look at, at the source code at the moment, oh, what was that? Anyway, so uh, what we do, what we have support for at the moment uh, in terms of files is to actually implement files. So we have file operations that we implement. We can do read, write, and, and like octos and things like those. Um, what we're going to introduce now is the ability to, to consume these file objects. And by consume, I mean you can open files and read and write and do things like those. Um, and... Uh, the place where we use use this is this uh, 9P server. Uh, there's a link to it uh, at the bottom, and, and the slides will be available. Uh, you can take a look. So I've, I've implemented a, a 9P server in, in the kernel. It has no uh, unsafe blocks at all, and it's it's a little over a thousand lines of code. It's not fully featured yet, but you can uh, at the moment uh, mount it and, and use it. Uh, I did a demo in Cangrejos uh, uh, last week, and the demo was uh, run a VM with uh, the server in it, and then we could mount that from from the guest and access the files uh, in the in the guest. Um, so, and, and with with this 9P server, and and uh, 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 there's also some some extra things that we had to do related to async because uh, this is actually using this this async code, and that's what makes it or part of what makes it simpler. So we added some new primitives uh, to to async that are not present at the moment, uh, but there are still a few more that 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 need to be added. Um, 
Another thing that is in the pipeline is, is a local async executor. So I talked about, and I merged before the work queue based one, but we have this, this other one, which is, uh, I, I call uh, local. Um, but if you look, it's, it's, it's used in the similar way as, as the, 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 the work queue one, except that we have this uh, handle.run uh, here in the end. So when we do that, uh, what happens is these tasks uh, get to run when we call this, this, this run method here. If we never call run, then the tasks never run. Right? Like we, can, we can queue them up for running, but they'll, they'll never run. Um, another thing that we can do with the local executor is use this run on dedicated thread. And what this does is to create a thread and then those tasks will run on, on those threads. And in fact, if you hold on to this handle, you can queue more things uh, to, that, to that remote thread. Uh, but the idea is that you, you run everything in just uh, a single thread. Uh, and of course, if you want to run on multiple thread, in a thread pool, then you use the work queue based one. If you don't want to share it with the system uh, work queues, then you can create your own work queue and um, um, use that. Um, now, on the, on the file system side, I said at the moment with, with V8, you could only create an empty one. Um, uh, now, this, this, there's, uh, there's a branch which has uh, better support. We can create uh, static uh, uh, file systems, it's static in the sense that you specify which files you want in directories and uh, special files uh, when, when it gets mounted. And uh, for files, you can actually specify uh, which type implements the, the, the file operations uh, of your files. And of course, different files can have different file operations. Um, and, and what we want, of course, eventually is to have full support for dynamic file systems and file systems backed by uh, block devices and things like those. Um, and in terms of uh, next milestones, um, we want to get uh, more users and, and use cases uh, in, inside the kernel. We have other people working on lots of other things. Um, we want to, to extend the current integration of the Rust uh, tools with, with kernel tools and uh, kernel documentation is an example. Testing is, is, is another example. We have some, some cool integration uh, that, that Miguel did uh, for things like if, if in your documentation, if you put examples of, of how to use things that, that you build, for example, like the work queue, uh, a lot of the code that, I, that you had here is actually uh, uh, a part of documentation as an example. But then what happens is when you compile it, uh, uh, those examples are extracted and compiled as well. And in fact, they run if you enable uh, KUnit, uh, which, which I think is, is, is pretty cool because it prevents the examples from going stale because not only do we compile, but we also run them and make sure that uh, they're doing what, what we expect them to do. Um, we also want to get uh, more maintainers and companies and researchers involved. Uh, and the idea here is um, that uh, maintainers are, of course, the experts in, in their areas. Uh, and we have a little bit of experience with Rust, so we want to get to get together and, and, and perhaps add support to, to, to Rust uh, to these um, other subsystems uh, with their help. Uh, what we want eventually is for, for, for them to, to maintain the Rust uh, support as well. Uh, and lastly, in our list, we want to upstream the, 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 the Rust support. Uh, some events coming up, uh, there will be a session on, on the kernel summit uh, in a couple of days at uh, 3.45. Uh, there we'll have more time than we'll have now for, for discussions. Uh, and, and I hope uh, we, we get to see you there. Um, uh, the Linux Foundation has this mentorship series. Uh, we've had already uh, three sessions related to uh, Rust for Linux. And we're gonna have two more, uh, one this month and one next month. Um, and this actually, this, some of the stuff is, is, is very basic, but uh, if it's the first time you're being exposed to this uh, Rust and, and Rust for Linux project, this, this may be interesting for you to, to look and uh, catch up. And I think that's, that's all we had and be happy to try to answer questions. By the way, I wanted to thank you also the, the, all the contributors that we got and by the way, also the, um, uh, the new reviewers that we got uh, that stepped up to, to review the, to be appears in the maintainers file as reviewers, uh, Botyun, uh, Gary, Guo, and uh, Bjorn. Uh, so thanks a lot uh, to them. The only Botyun is here, I think. Uh, maybe. Yeah, this session is happening yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true, it's true, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, thanks a lot uh, for those that are stepping uh, into the project and, and, and doing things. Uh, so if you back up a few slides to the where you had RCU locking, uh, the RCU example, um, I had a, a question around that, uh, specifically around uh, ergonomics. Uh, so so in Rust, the yep. 
sort of rusty way of doing locking is that you have a container and that container contains a guard which provides you with access to the data. I'm just curious why we went this way uh, with having a separate uh, function that you then pass the guard to rather than um, actually having the, the lock contain the item that it is locking. So you can't access it unless you actually go through that item and then drop it when you go out of scope. Yeah, so, so um, th there was one, one thing that I didn't mention is that um, for, for revocable, for example, we have, this is try access with guard. We also have a try access. Okay, so try access returns a guard that gives you access to the object. And then when that guard gets dropped, then the RCU read side lock is also dropped. Uh, the reason we introduced this, this new one is because uh, we may want the guard to outlive the access to the object. This was the exact scenario. Like uh, there was another field of some struct that we were touching, we actually that we wanted to mutate. Uh, and then the, the compiler was saying, oh, you're holding on to a mutable version of that thing with this guard, mm -hmm. right? So we wanted to drop the guard, but we didn't want to drop the RCU lock, okay? So, so we separated this. Uh, uh, of course, it's not required to, to be done this way, and we have this other option to, to, to do without that. Awesome. Uh, but this allows you to, to for, for the lock to outlive the access to the object. That's basically what it is. That, that makes sense. I, I think that, honestly, that's probably best of both worlds, being able to do it both ways. So. Okay, uh, we had a, it may have just been AV squawk, but there may have been somebody trying to ask a question earlier. If uh, somebody was trying to ask a question remotely, it would be a great time for them to get off mute, speak up, and hopefully we can hear them. Regarding the RCU question there as well, I think a major distinction between RCU and the usual mutex or similar style is that uh, you're, the container style approach avoids the reference outliving the mutex, but in the context of the uh, uh, of RCU, you may have one RCU that covers a lot of accesses, even to completely unrelated data structures, other than it's just one RCU block rather than several. That's why the model doesn't quite fit as well. But yeah. Right, if there are no more questions, uh, yeah. Oh! <laughs> um, yeah, on, on the subject of the, uh, the, 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 the file system access stuff that you're doing, I really, 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 really want to work with you on that because I, I have some ideas about how I think Rust should be accessing the page cache. I'm not a particularly rusty person, but I'm particularly a page cache person. And I, I, I want to work with you to make sure that we've got a really good solid design there. So please talk to me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if you, yeah, but I don't know who you are. If you like, <laughs> but I will talk to you if you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 I've just been doing a microphone for everyone knew my name. I'm Matthew Wilcox. Uh, okay, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yes. Let's talk. Uh, for for the for the kernel summit one, we actually have a a, a list of topics, uh, but but we don't we don't have it here. Um, yeah, if if there are no more more questions, I think we can leave early. Yeah, let's head off for the break. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah.